Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to solve this using any method. Now, which method would be the best? Well, when I take a look at it, I see the variable x with the same coefficient and one being positive, one being negative. Wow, all I have to do is add the two equations and the x is eliminated and it's an easy problem. But let's say I didn't realize that and I choose to use hey, the method of substitution. So what would that look like? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation and solve that for x in terms of the, well, in terms of the other variable y. Let's try that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to take this equation and solve for x in terms of y. Remember that I would not recommend doing it that way, but you'll see what happens when you pick the wrong method. Well, there's no such thing as the wrong method. Any method will do, and you will get the solution eventually, but you'll see how much easier it is by using the method of elimination. All right, so we get uh, 7x minus 4y equals 13. So the first thing we're going to do is move the 4y to the other side. So we get 7x is equal to positive 4y plus 13. And then we divide both sides by the numerical coefficient from the x. So we get x is equal to 4 over 7y plus 13 over 7. Wow, that's already a giveaway that this may not be the, the easiest way to solve the problem. But hey, what we're going to do now is take this and plug that into the first equation. So let me go around this way, plug it into here, and that means that we now have our first equation written like this. We have minus 7 times. Instead of x, we're going to write 4 sevenths y plus 13 over 7. And then we have plus 6y is equal to minus 11. Okay, so now we have to simplify that. Notice our equation now only has the one variable y in it, so we're going to solve that equation for y. So first we multiply this times this. So here we use the distribution property. We're going to distribute this across both terms of that binomial. The sevens cancel out, so you get a minus 4y. And here the uh, sevens again cancel out, so you get minus 13 plus 6y equals minus 11. Combine the y's, well first let's move the 13 over to the other side. So we end up with minus 4y plus 6y is equal to minus 11 plus 13 because the negative 13 becomes plus 13 when we move the other side. Continuing on over here, let's rewrite the equation. Minus 4y plus 6y is equal to minus 11 plus 13. Why did I rewrite the equation? Because visually, trying to solve the equation here by putting the answer over there, it's kind of hard for the brain. It's better just to take that equation and rewrite it over here so you're just looking at it from the same direction. So now combine these two terms, we get 2y is equal to negative 11 plus 13, that would be plus 2, divide both sides by 2, and we get y equals 1. So that gives us the first variable. All we have to do now is plug that into one of the two equations. Which one? It doesn't really matter. So let's take this equation right here. So we're going to take this and bring it down here. End up with 7x minus 4y equals 13. Notice I simply copy the equation again before I start working with it. I now plug in 1 for y. So 7x minus 4 times 1 equals 13. So that gives us 7x minus 4 equals 13. Now we bring the 4 across, get 7x equals 13 plus 4, or 7x equals 17. Divide both sides by 7, and I get x equals 17 over 7. Now what would I do to make sure that that was done correctly? I would take y equals 1, x equals 17 over 7, and plug it back into the other equation, the top equation, to see if I get the left side to equal the right side. But instead of doing that, another way to check is to do the same problem using a different method. So here what we're going to do, we're going to put them back up here again. So we have minus 7x plus 6y equals minus 11 and 7x minus 4y equals a positive 13. And notice since 
I already have the x variables with the same numerical coefficient and one being positive and one being negative. All I have to do is add the two equations together to eliminate one of the variables. And so I end up with, that's zero. Here we have plus two y is equal to two. So two y equals two, divide both sides by two. I get y equals one. Wow, just like that. Very simply, I get to this answer already. All I have to do now is plug that back into one of the two equations. Let me plug it into the other equation to see what we get. So minus 7x plus 6y equals minus 11. I'm going to plug this into here. Minus 7x plus 6 times 1 equals minus 11. So minus 7x plus 6 equals minus 11. Now I'm going to move the 6 over the other side. Minus 7x equals minus 11 minus 6, or minus 7x equals minus 17. Now divide both sides by a negative 7, and I get x equals 17 over 7. And notice I get the exact same results I did before using a completely different method. I'm pretty sure it is correct, and that is how it's done. Now, just to reiterate, notice that I could pick any method. I use the substitution method first. A lot of work, but I did get the right answer. The elimination method was straightforward because right away I could already add the two equations, get rid of x, solve for y, plug it into the other equation. So, you can see that any method will work, but some methods work better in some cases than in others. And so in this case, the method of elimination would have been the more preferred method, at least in my opinion. I would have used the wrong method. <laughs> <laughs> I used to kind of brute force it, whatever method came to my mind without thinking through it first. Uh, now you realize that you kind of look at it and strategize real quickly, take a few seconds, look at it, strategize it. Oh, look at that, method of elimination. And that's probably the way to do it. Okay, let's see what else we got.